The Captain Courage auditions by Jack Fight. Sorry I'm late, guys. Killer Kraken and Crusher Krill don't defeat themselves, you know. There are a lot of you people here. Good turnout for the auditions. Let me see. Hey, looking good, you. Hey, you thrust. Hello. Hello. Good to see you, too. Hey, lady, nice hammer. It's a gavel. Gavel? A hunter gavel. Hey, snowball. Lose the parka. It's like 75 in here. Good to see you. Thanks for coming out. Hey, good to see you, too. Someone get that old man some pants. First applicant, please enter. Behold, it is I, Doc Odd. Doc Odd. Doc Odd. Doc Odd. Doc Cod. Doc Cod? Isn't that the professor of gill research at the City University? No, I believe that's Doc Cod, the scientist squid's arch nemesis. As you can see on my file, I am Doc Odd. Ah, yes. Under abilities, it says Master of the Mystic Arts. Are you a wizard? Perhaps to the layman, I would appear as such. But I am no mere conjurer. So what do you do? I peer through the fabric that separates the dreamlands using the talisman of Yig. Ah, yes, the talisman of Yig. Do I get to punch it in the face? The talisman? No, it's this very item I wear. Given to me by the Chaldean oracles of Zoroaster, to travel to the Dreamlands. The Dreamlands? Is that that new strip joint down on 6th? Will I get to punch them in the face? No. The Dreamlands are a realm of ancient mysteries. The ancient mysteries do sound devious. Can I punch them in the face? Mystery is more of a concept rather than a physical thing, but the Dreamlands are guarded by evil minions to call the Deep One. Minions controlled by whom? Controlled by the great Cthulhu. This Cthulhu is... I know who Cthulhu is. I dream just like everybody else. You dream of Cthulhu? Of course. I haven't had a good night's sleep in months. So with your help, I plan to punch Cthulhu in the face. For justice! No, no. Well, you could, but it's not recommended. No, that would be bad. Sounds like good, clean, wholesome fun. Okay, let's do it, Doc. Captain Courage and Dr. Odd fight Cthulhu in hand-to-hand -hand combat. I like the sounds of that. But I... um... Where did he go? Oh well. Next! Hello, Captain Courage. Very impressive. Yes. Yes, I am. And now that you've seen my hair this close, I understand why you're doubly impressed. But please, not too much adoration. I am quite modest. I was referring to your office. It is tastefully decorated, isn't it? Anyway, it says here that you are a super gal, but I just see a civilian in glasses. Explain yourself. It's true. The woman you see sitting before you is mild-mannered reporter Lois Stacy. But let me remove my glasses. See, I am Super Gal. You are Super Gal. Why the clever disguise? Why wouldn't you want to be Super Gal all of the time? I use my secret identity to mingle with the common people and protect my privacy. Secret identity? Why would you need to hide your identity? Being a superhero is awesome. I use it to protect my family and friends from my enemies. Hmm. My family perished when my home world was destroyed, and all my friends are superheroes. So I think I'm sticking with being awesome 24-7. My secret identity also allows me to have a day job. As Lois Stacy, I can inauspiciously observe while I work as a photographer. A photographer, you say? Well, that is fantastic. Some of the best pictures of me were taken by photographers. I use my job to explain how I'm always in the vicinity of important world events. Hey, I recognize you. Because I'm Super Gal. I believe I told you that. No, because the night I won my Tony Award, you took a picture of my date getting out of the car ungracefully. 
Well, I... Yes. And you were there during my vacation on the beach in southern France. Pictures of my bronzed buttocks ended up on the front page of the City Inquirer. In fact, I think I saw you in the tree outside of my office at Courageous Manor, not three hours ago. Hey, you have your camera with you right now. Get out of my office. Get out! Up, up, and escape! Next! Hello, I'm Dr. Deja Vu. Another doctor? One moment, Doc. Show of hands out there, how many of you have their doctorate? Four, five, six, seven... Dr. Disco, Doc Rock, Dr. Doctor... How could there be so many? The doctorate in superheroism is a two-semester course at City Community College. These guys don't even have superpowers. Any of you guys out there whose only superpower is having attended classes at a crummy community college, see yourselves out. You can say that again. I see. It says here that you've saved the president from assassination. A couple of times. Also, you foiled bank robberies, hijackings... More than once. I've even defeated Killer Kraken and Crusher Krill. I seem to remember hearing that before. I think. I'm sure you have. That is a fantastic costume. Black with a touch of silver. Mysterious with a hint of class. I like it. It's my own design. I'm glad you approve. Thank you for your time, Dr. Deja Vu. I'll be in touch. Dr. Deja Vu will return. Next! Greetings, friend. I see your name here is Kelvin Mari, a.k.a. the Calamari Kid. Um, kid? Not just Calamari? It has to be kid, does it? Give me one good reason why you should be my sidekick. <laughs> Well said. If you had a newsletter, I would subscribe to it. But aren't you the sidekick of Scientist Squid? Oh, you two crazy kids can work that out. You guys are the one-two punch of nautical justice. Maybe he would take you more seriously if you dropped the kid from your name. Thank you. I am so glad you agree. Please see yourself out. Good guy, but now my office smells like the wooden door off an old tuna boat. And for that matter... No more sidekicks with lad, boy, or kid in your name. That's just creepy. All of you go home. One of you looks like you're 30 years old. Yeah, you. Listen, if you're really a kid, then I had trouble playing Sabbath's The Wizard on my harmonica. And here's a hint. I fucking rocked that song. Next! Good afternoon, friend. Aren't you Mac of Brannigan and Mac fame? This chair is damp, so very wet. My apologies. The guy in here before you looked like an adolescent Cthulhu in green and gold spandex. Wet from head to toe. Anyways, aren't you Mac of Mac and Brannigan fame? Ah, yes, I am. But currently Brannigan is cryogenically frozen. I'm available until a cure is found and he can be sawed. You expect there to be a cure for being mauled by a Yeti? Maybe. Scientists are on the cutting edge of face transplant technology. No. But advances in reconstructive. Uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you. Next! Good afternoon! Hello there, friend. It says here your name is Dr. Deja Vu. It's nice to meet you. That is a fantastic costume. Black with a touch of silver. Mysterious with a... Hey, you get out of here! Dr. Deja Vu will return. Next! Hello, my name is George Gesture. Hello, friend. And what is your superpower? Um, my pants are getting damp and my crotch smells like seafood. 
That's not much of a superpower. No, I just sat down in this chair and it smells like the south end of a northbound Norwal. Apologies, friend. Calamari Kid was sitting there earlier. Good kid, but a sea-based sidekick just wouldn't work for me. Maybe, but just think, you could call him Chum. Aha! Brilliant! So, Jester, what is it that you do? I'm only with my haunted gavel. I dispensed ironic justice and social commentary. A magical gavel, you say? Haunted. It's a haunted gavel. It contains the soul of beloved television personality, Bob Crane. Well, that makes sense. Just a moment, please. I told all of you lads to leave. Get. Scram. Didn't I? I did say that, didn't I? Yes, you certainly did. I wasn't being too harsh, was I? Both the Scoutmaster and Super Priest really ruined that dynamic for the rest of us. To be fair, the Scoutmaster is a villain, so evil deeds are par for the course. But it was so sad to hear what the Ultra Boy in Ultra Boy 2 endured over the years. Agreed. I think when the Masters of Violence strapped Ultra Boy to the rocket and fired it into the Time Nexus, they did him a favor. I presided over the Ultra Boy 2 case. The courtroom door saw a lot of action that day. It took five minutes for the poor kid to point out all the places he was touched. The court stenographer typed the phrase, Tongue punched my fart box so many times that it nearly drove her mad. Fart box indeed. Underage sidekicks are an anachronism and have no place in the present day superheroism. Agreed. So if I told all the lads to go home, what the hell is the tortoise kid still standing around in my waiting room for? Oh, he's leaving. That's the tortoise kid's top speed. Ever since the radioactive bite on the oil of the Galapagos, that's a brisk pace for him. <sighs> so, what would we do if you were my sidekick? We would scour the streets in search of wrongdoers, bringing them justice. I like where this is going. Continue. We would shine the bright white light of justice on all that is black. Your jib. I like the cut of it. We would also cleanse the darkness from the world and return the power to the true master race. That sounds good. Uh, uh, what? Too long have the mud races gone unchecked. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll be in touch. Is it because I'm a woman? Chauvinist jerk. That's it. Auditions are cancelled. I'm not invincible. I have the strength of ten men and dashing good looks. I don't need a sidekick. See yourselves out. You suck! You suck! You suck! Well, I think that went well. Speaking of my harmonica... That was terrible. I'm a little out of practice. Why did I put myself through that? Ugh. Attention, Courage Cadet. You have a phone call. Attention. Uh, yellow. Captain Courage, this is George Gesture. Do you remember me? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't... I was just in there. I had a haunted gavel. Ah, uh, yes, you are the squid-faced boy, with the great black and silver costume. Um, no, there was two different people, and neither one of them was me. And the woman. My crotch smelt like seafood. Ah, uh, yes, now I remember you. The one with the hammer. Ugh! Oh, it's a gavel. A haunted gavel. Anyway, I'm just down to my car, and I was telling my boyfriend what happened, and it occurred to us that you just thought I was being racist when I mentioned the mod racist. Well, you did say that. Tell me about the mod racist, darling. The mod racers are a group of monsters from the oil mud. They're made of mud, and they always terrorize the city. You thought I meant African American? Well, you can see why. I'm dating an African American, Congo Knight. Well, hello, yeah. I'm so embarrassed. Well, then I do apologize that I thought you were racist. It's alright. I thought you were being sexist. Yes, 
It was all just a misunderstanding. Ah, uh, it is to laugh. Hey, do you want to go on a date sometime? I just introduced you to my boyfriend. He's sitting right next to me. Well, yes, I am sitting right next to me. Oh, yes, that's right. The mud racers are actually attacking the city via the sewers right now, if you'd like to come. Anyways, thank you for your call, Judge Jester. I'll be in touch. Now wait, it's just the claw. Congo Knight and me are going to fight them. We really could use your... Kind of boring today. Not much going on. <laughs> powers of Bob Crane feel the wrath of my haunted gavel. Hmm, I'd better replace that chair. I think it's time for a vacation. While it's all quiet in the city anyways. Bye bye tortoise kid. Turn off the lights on the way out. Bye bye cow. Before you go, do you validate? I guess he's gone then. I hope they don't ticket the tortoise mobile. I already have so many speeding tickets. The end. Sent to prison by a military court for a crime they didn't commit, these men promptly escaped from the maximum security stockade to the Vinland Underground. Today, still wanted by the Spiral Architects, they survive as underground radio podcasters. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find them, Maybe you can listen to Vinland Old Time Radio. Vinland Old Time Radio. Podbean. Com.